This is an Eagle fan. I sundance with this fan. I sweat with this fan. I do everything. When I speak and when I pray, I pray with this. This is just a feather, a fan, an eagle fan. I don't know where this has been. And I don't know what this bird has, has seen. This, to my people, is a warrior bird. It's a warrior, it's a warrior bird. The hawks, the eagles, the buzzards, they're warrior birds. And is, He's a messenger to the Creator. The principles that I spoke about are guides when I hold this. I cannot say bad things and I cannot lie. I have to conduct myself in a good way. I have met a lot of people in my life. I'm 71 years old, just a young man. My wife asked, asked me, she said, how do you feel? I feel like I'm 17, I said. But actually, it's backwards. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, I started working in the corrections. I was a longshoreman for 38 years. I retired as a head foreman there. I worked for Empire Stevedore for the last 14 years and 38 years. I retired nine years ago. At least I thought I retired. And I spent, before that, I spent eight and a half years in the Canadian Army, in the Canadian Paratroopers, and I was also in Korea for a year and a half. I was 18 months in the front line in Korea during the Korean War. And, but I, I started, and by the way, I'm an alcoholic, but I've been clean and sober for 42 years, last January the 16th. <laughs> so I had a pretty good life. You know, it was pretty, it was filled with turmoil because I didn't understand who I was. I didn't know. It took me so many years to find that out. And consequently, I bought pain and all this other stuff, this bad stuff, to the people around me, especially to the people I loved, and anybody else who rubbed shoulders with me, around me. When you live in that sense, and because I didn't know any better, that's what I knew. That's how I lived. That's how I survived. Because I'd been on my own since I was 13 years old. And that's how it was. But it doesn't have to be that way all the time. And it took me a long time to find that out. So anyway, I started working in corrections. They asked me to go into corrections. I didn't want to go. I was already sun dancing and I was already doing this native stuff. I didn't want to go. And one thing the old people tell us, we must be obedient. You must discipline yourself. Well, I had lots of discipline as far as the army goes and sip different things of drinking and stuff like this. But I didn't have discipline of how to live. I didn't know, I didn't understand. Especially, I didn't understand the discipline that was connected with my culture, with my people. When I started working in corrections, I met a lot of wardens, a lot of guards, a lot of inmates, a lot of different people. Here I am trying to speak the truth and be a good human being. And I was getting all these messages 
outside and they were affecting me. I was going healing. We were talking about healing all the time. And I couldn't seem to get, understand why I could see healing because I was on a healing journey myself. I couldn't understand these people, why they couldn't see that. I was getting, people were telling me different things, different, some of them were lying, outright light lying to me, you know. And I knew, and I knew they were, they were not, there was less than the truth. So, I went, anyway, I, I was in one of these institutions, I'm not going to tell you where it was, because I don't want to do anything that's not right, or say anything that's going to be bad. I went, uh, I worked there for a couple of years, then I went to uh, Ferndale. I started sweating in Ferndale. Then I went to work in Elbow Lake. And of course, I met the warden. The warden was Ron Weeb. He told me this one time. He said, George, I don't really see what you see, he said. Because, he said, I'm a bureaucrat. That's what he said to me. I never forgot the words, because I really didn't understand what he was saying. You know, I thought to myself, does this man understand what, I, what I'm about, or what we're about, what this is about? Does he really understand this? Or is he just piecemealing me, patronizing me? Because I had been patronized before. So I was kind of hesitant to open myself up to this man. I used to go and listen to him in the warden's board, the morning meetings, and it was the same old thing every morning. He'd start out with a different, with what he had had to say, and but his responses that he was getting was the same all the time. He shipped one guy here, shipped two guys over this other way, shipped this other guy because some guy got caught smoking pot or some guy was fixing another guy, OD'd or whatever. That all came out in them hearing, in them, in them boardrooms. One day, he, he said to me, can we go for a walk? This is in Elbow Lake. I said, yeah. I said, let's go. So we walked around. There's a perimeter. We could walk around about a mile, I guess, up by the sawmill. We started walking. And he said, what do you think of this? I said, we're in a, we're in a bad state here. I said, nobody's communicating. Nobody's, somehow, I said, we're not listening to each other. I don't know what the problem is. I said, we're not, we're not hearing each other. He said to me, you know, maybe, maybe if people would start speaking from the heart, he said, it would, they would understand. You see, when he said that to me, the heart, when he brought that out, that lit something in me. I thought, how can this white man talk about something like this when he doesn't know about it? At least I thought he didn't know it. You see, because everything that I'm taught 
is about here. About, I must speak from the heart. I must look from the heart. I must listen with my heart. My heart will solve problems, will help me. My mouth will get me in trouble. <laughs> you see, simple things like that. Why did the Creator do that? You know, why did he do that? He gave us all these things because he gave us our free will. It's the same thing. He gave us two of these and one of these. But we got it mixed up. <laughs> you see, we are supposed to listen twice as much as we speak. The old people tell us this. I have, I had five elders that taught me. Five old people back east. No sim. Um si kapiskwan. Kapiskwa taogu gaisino. Grandson, this is how you speak to the people. Be gentle. Because you might wound that person. Big square no ma warm your Mouth will say bad things. Stuff comes out. It hurts people. So when Ron said that to me, that that's when I started to listen to this man. I didn't agree with, I'd be lying if I said I agreed with everything he did. But the position that he had as a warden and the attention that was put on that man, the pressure must have been unbearable when I, when I look back. How he ever survived in that, in that setting with the things that that guy come and done is beyond me. You talk about a commitment. And then we went to Edmonton. And that's when I found out who he was. We went to Pesaga still in uh, Obima. I listened to that guy speak all the way from Edmonton to Obima and back again. And I visited with him in Edmonton, in, in Obima there. And mostly, I understood the guy. Because I'm going to tell you something. It's really weird. You see, I had a vision of what I was supposed to do. I didn't want to do it, but I had this vision. I was supposed to go in and speak to people in the prisons and help people in prisons. I said I didn't know how. I said I got nothing to tell them. And the creator said to me, hey, my grandfather, my spirit helper, he said, no sim, ki stegi way ki me goin, e gaen mat the Creator gave you something, a gift. Don't abuse it and don't throw it away. Don't leave it at home. He put it in your heart. And this man talked to me. I understood. I understood who he was because his vision was the same as mine. Where I practically identical. But he was a warden and I was an old Indian over here. Two different people coming from different walks of life but had the same thing. 
It was amazing. You know, I could speak to that man anytime. I had an open door policy. He had an open door policy with me. That means that I could have went any time. It didn't matter what he was doing, and I could go and speak to him. And he could come and speak to me. We had that relationship. We did, we did what we were supposed to do, each one to the best of his ability. You know, coming from being a native person, an Aboriginal person, and finding a man where I rebelled against authority. And when I seen all these natives in jail and wonder what the hell they were doing in here, why so many people were in jail, so many of my people were in jail. Right away, the easiest thing to do was to blame all the white people. See? But that wasn't so. We weren't, the white people weren't totally all to blame. Because someplace along the line, the Indians said yes. They agreed. So we have to take our responsibility as well. For me, I think when you meet a person like Ron and you work with a man and you know that man's heart, they say you'll always meet somebody in your life that'll have an effect on your life, on your own personal life and everything that you do. I think I met my, I, I met that guy. I think I've already found him. I was so sad when that man passed away. Probably not as sad as his immediate family, as surely his sons. I can understand how it is to lose a person, a family, a loved one. I lost my son, he was 20 years old got killed by drugs and alcohol. I've seen a lot of people die in my life. But I'm going to tell you, I was not a quarter as bad as when my son passed away. There's nothing to this day that has been so painful in my life. So I can understand, surely in the family's loss, I can understand that. Life is short. One of the teachings are, you know, I used to be the person who used to Go, go, go. Point A to point B, fast. Do it, give it, all you got. When I went back to my culture, I had to change. You know? And I said in a ceremony one time, I said, what am I supposed to do? He said, be you, be you. He said, look, I gave you gifts, what I made, he said. I give them to you. It's your responsibility. Who do you see when you go around? I said, people, I see you know. I said, yeah, that way. That's the ones he said that you pray for. Then he said, 
Never has a human being sat beside me. You live on the earth. Your feet are on the earth. Moi we got I see no tapu. You pray for these people here, he said. Ego taki steni pawyen. What's a good tan? Go which how I see no. Just watch, he said. I will heal the people. I will heal the people. And you too. You are a, a person. You will be standing with the people. You too will be healed. And you will come up like this together. You will be healed together. So you will n enable each other. You can help each other. Walk in a good way. You can reach back down that mountain and pull that, pull that other person up beside you to walk with you. And you can reach up to the next person, and he will help you. Come on. You see, to the native, to this Aboriginal person, restorative justice is living in a good way. Living in a good way. Restorative justice doesn't start in Ottawa. <laughs> and it doesn't end there. Thanks, John. Restorative justice starts here. Just like healing. It starts here. You know, if you don't believe me, you come and see my family. I lost one boy through alcohol and drug addiction. And every one of my kids, me and the wife, had eight children. I've got 15 grandchildren and one great grandchild. And I'm going to tell you something. My last, my son, the last one, Youngest boy, he just turned 34 on the 1st of June, day before yesterday. He's been dry, clean and sober for six and a half years. No drugs, no alcohol. And he is living this way. And I might add, he's a Catholic like me. <laughs> You see, it's not about Catholic, Protestant, Baha'i, Muslim. It's not about that, Aboriginal. Not about that. That's for teachings. Each one is valid. That's the teachings that was given by the Creator to this world. All these different people. The problem is, we forgot. We forgot. We forgot about it. We have to go back. I had to go back to my roots. I had to go back. Whenever I have a problem in my family, in my community, in the prisons, with people in general, I go back to the bottom where I came from. And when I get back there, in my mind, it, the relationship is between my creator and me. That's where it is for me. I must. 
there is an answer there for that's how restorative justice applies to me. Restorative justice is people helping people. People walking side by side. People listening to other people. People loving each other. People being respectful, being proud of who they are, not in an arrogant way, in a good way. You see, these qualities that's what I saw in this man, and I didn't even know it. Somehow he had to prove himself. He had to think, at least I thought. He had to think, and he couldn't think that way if he wasn't an Indian. That's what bothered me about Ron. <laughs> you know, really, that really was. Because you must remember now, I hated white people. I did. I would sooner do you guys in than talk to you. That, that was a plain, and I'll tell you to prove it, that's why I joined the paratroopers. Because <laughs> I was sick of getting beat up. You know, and that's, that's what happened. Consequently, it got so bad that I turned it around and I started hating Indians and then I hated myself. Now, do I look like a person that would kill himself? Well, I tried to kill myself twice because I couldn't stand myself. See, I was one sick puppy. So that, in a nutshell, to me, is how I was and what I first thought Ron was, you know, and what the reality of my life and reality of his life meant to both of us. We had a relationship. It was not a whole bunch of words talking. It was just being. It was simple. I knew he was a warden. He didn't have to prove it to me. He knew I was an Indian. I didn't have to prove that to him. You know, you know it was, that's the way it was. It was such a simple man. Complicated, if you wanted him to be. But he wasn't. To me, he wasn't. He just wasn't. And that's what helped me build relationship with him. I was devastated when he passed away because I was going to quit. And I was told that I would be a traitor if I quit. I was told in a ceremony, are you here for the full ride? Are you just here when the sea is calm? Or are you gonna be here when it gets stormy as well? You see, I guess I wanted everything to be just so. But life is not that way. Life is like this, full of ups and downs. There are just a few thoughts that that I had of Ron. I tried to write it down. I couldn't do it. I just could not do it. So I phoned an elder and I asked him, I said, what the heck's going on here? I said, I, I tried, I said, I got one paragraph. I said, it took me two days. And he said, hey, hey, one gets seen a monkey, why? No, sim. Grandson, he said, you forgot. All tradition, you're supposed to speak from the heart. He said. So I put the pen away. And I, I thanked my creator for putting me, straightening me out again. 
and he'll probably straighten me out today, later on, if I said something wrong in this meeting. I'd like to thank you very much. Thank you for your patience. You're a good, good audience. Thank you.